Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday. This week, we have with us Aisha Kamara. Hey, Aisha. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to have you here with us the whole week. And uh, we'll start with a book. Uh, We'll talk about teams in a second. But what was the book that most inspired you in your role as a Scrum Master, Aisha? I would definitely say one of the books that I really enjoyed was Project to Product. Um, My background is project management. And so I believe that this book really helped me to see, you know, how to uh, really help my development teams, especially when it comes into, especially in terms of, um, you know, making sure that we understand the metrics and we're able to see things um, at a much deeper level to be able to support the teams um, while they're producing their product. Um, It was really helpful for sure. Definitely more detailed as well. Uh, so uh, when you you gave the example of the metrics that are different, of mm-hmm. course, when you go from organizing work around projects to organizing work around products. But what are, what are some of the concrete changes that the book talks about when you go from thinking about projects to thinking about products? Yes. So um, one of the things that I remember reading from that book was really making sure that, um, you know, you you, there's actually an emphasis on the team's happiness, you know, and one of the things that we do as Scrum Masters is to ensure that, um, you know, our teams are motivated so they can continue to produce um, good products. And so there was even like a measure of that. Um, the author actually owns this um, just tool called Task Top Viz. And so a lot of, um, you know, what's there in the book is um, implemented in that tool. And so when it's connected with Jira, you're even able to see like the score, you know, of how the team is doing as well. Um, But, you know, one of the things I would also say is that, you know, with with the idea of going from the project to product, you know, is really making sure that, you know, you're being as efficient as possible. And, you know, with project management, there are some things that could be, um, you know, left out or overlooked. Um, But, you know, when we work in sprints, we're able to see, um, you know, the flow of work much quicker and and everything that's going on within that two week cycle, um, you know, much quicker. And everything is more efficient because we have to make sure we're making the best use of our time to make sure that we hit that product goal. Absolutely. And uh, that aspect of focusing on the team and, and focusing the measures on the team rather than on task completion, which is a lot of the project mindset, right? Like, you know, you have your work breakdown structure and your Gantt chart and you're following that all the tasks are completed on time. And and to revert that, right? Like, it's not that that isn't important. It's just that there are other things that are more important when you're focusing on product. And I, I really like that, that uh, contrast. So uh, definitely project to products and we'll put the link to the book on the show notes so that people can easily find it and uh, uh, definitely go in and, and check that out. Aisha, now we turn our attention to the teams that we were just talking about and uh, how sometimes they can become their own worst enemies. Uh, of course, they don't do that on purpose, but they develop this kind of behaviors, patterns or things that they kind of grab onto that over time can become a problem. So tell us that story. Give us a little bit of the context so that we know, you know, what kind of team it is, how big it is. Are they working in a multi-team environment or single team environment? And then walk us through the steps of how those small little things developed over time and eventually became a problem. Okay. So um, I worked at a, I worked at a company where we had Um, two mobile teams. So I had an iOS and an Android team. And my teams did not have product owners. And because we didn't have a product owner, there was no one there to answer the requirements or answer for the requirements during the the refinement. Um, No one there to really show us what it is that needs to get done. And of course, we didn't have much of a backlog. 
Um, and so this went on for months. The company never decided to go and hire another product owner. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that, um, you know, I helped to do was to foster communication with other product leads um, because um, we had a web application that directly should correlate with our requirements for mobile. And so what I was able to do was uh, just to get product involved and also our tech leads um, for our mobile teams. And we were able to um, have the requirements fed into our backlogs. Um, And we also had meetings where we would include those product owners as well uh, to be able to answer to those requirements which eventually led, um, you know, to the developers being able to develop, you know, the work more efficiently. Um, but, you know, it it wasn't the most ideal situation to not have a product owner. But, you know, in the role of a Scrum Master, you just got to think fast and, you know, make sure that your teams are able to, you know, work towards developing what it is that we are, we're developing out. Yeah, absolutely. And w- one of the things that uh, uh, kind of strikes me from this, story is uh, there are two teams, but there's no product owner and the company doesn't want to hire a product owner. And I was just thinking that uh, I, I had a conversation with Michael uh, Huin and uh, Craig Smith at the Agile Online Summit this year or last year, rather. And we were talking about how important certain roles are and kind of rethinking the roles. And, and I was just wondering if in that company, for some reason, the management had developed this idea that product owners just weren't critical for teams to work well and to work effectively in their products. Was there that kind of perspective in that company? No, this is still the company that was a bit resistant <laughs> to becoming fully agile, you know, and and really um, adhering to the values of Scrum. Um, and so I think it was more so like of a, a cultural shift that needs to happen um, but the other teams all had other product owners. And so those are the product owners that I worked with. But for whatever reason, yes, they just never wanted to hire a product owner. And, you know, what happened was our tech leads kind of worked in that role of the product owner. And so I think because of that, there was no like need to, you know, move forward with that. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. And and actually, that was what the, the other thing that I wanted to pick up on, because what you, if I understood correctly, what you did as a scrum master was kind of find an alternative that involved the product owners that you needed to anyway collaborate and synchronize with, but then also help the tech leads grow a little bit into the product owner space. And I guess you were taking the other part of the product owner space as a scrum master to kind of create this uh, clarity about the direction that the apps were going to take and, and to have clean backlogs, right? Absolutely. Yes, for sure. I, I know for one of the first things that I did on that team was to review the backlog. But again, when you don't have a product owner, like a dedicated PO, there's, there's, not, there's not a lot of work that you have there. And so I think what was very important to me, you know, is to make sure that my teams knew that there was work to do because oftentimes that can impact your motivation, right? If you don't feel as if there's enough work in the backlog, then your, you know, your job is possibly threatened. And so, you know, just highlighting that and building transparency um, into the equation really helped on all ends. Yeah. Be transparent about the problems with the team because they need to know. And I, I think you said it very well. It can be very demotivating if there's no backlog, because that's, that's kind of where the work comes from, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great story. Thank you for sharing, Aisha. Thank you. Tuesday is Team Day here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. But tomorrow we talk about something that goes beyond the work we do with the teams. We will talk about how to lead change and what our guests have learned from leading and participating in change programs during their career. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.